actually, before we do that, uh, let's add another NPC so I can show you what happens um, with the randoms when, when your instances are all created at the exact same time. Um, I'm just going to add another one of these. Copy that. I'm going to say um, new NPC equals new NPC. Create a duplicate. Let's do the princess. I'm going to try a different model here. I'll call it merchant. Buy my awesome stuff. Okay, I'm going to put him at 7, 5. New NPC entity model. Should be ready to go. So those are going to generate so fast that their movement timers are going to be identical. If you watch their movements here, they'll move at the at the exact same time because they're on the one second timer they check their behavior at the same time and their random seeds are the same number so uh, they're not very random at all um, because their random seeds are identical uh, <laughs> they're always going to be you know moving together of course, if they hit obstacles and stuff, then their you know move patterns will be upset a little bit, but they'll continue moving when they're able to. You can still see them turning and stuff. It's kind of funny. So what we want is a general purpose uh, um, global timer that we can use, or a global random, I'm sorry, not a timer, a global random that we can use just for this sort of thing. Um, then what we can do is force it to the next value in uh, in the seed gives it a little more randomness, uh, which is going to be kind of nice. So it'll force each instance to the next value in the seed. Sorry. Uh, let's see. Going to start out in. Um, I need to go to my globals. And this is where I will create a new random. So I'm just going to call it um, public shared game randomizer as random. OK. If I can use new in that. Successfully. Before I was just, uh, you know, adding that and then going into game one um, and creating a new instance of this game randomizer, but I think I'm just going to do a little experiment here and see if it still works properly. Um, we've created a randomizer, now we need to employ it. We'll go back into our NPC class. And uh, this is where we're going to want to. Uh, mix things up a bit. So what we'll do is uh, take this and here's where, you know, without fail, every 1,000 milliseconds their um, behavior routine is invoked. So what we want to do is say, what if there was only, you know, a 66% chance or a 90% chance or, you know, a 30% chance of uh, of this actually being invoked? Even if this uh, even if the timer is met, what if we could just mix it up a bit here? Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, actually come down to this little spot here and say, OK, uh, and our globals dot game randomizer dot next, grab the next value. And I'm going to do a, a percentile here. I'm going to say 
you know, a number from 1 to uh, 99, I guess we, we want to do because it's always going to drop back a value. I'm going to say uh, 1 to 101. So pick a number between 1 and uh, 100. And if that number is greater than, say, 66, then by all means, um, go ahead and run your update cycle. So each one of them is going to be looking at the same uh, random seed, but it's being forced to the next value. So even if one, uh, you know, the first one will get, get one number, and then the next NPC, as it's running through its update sub, uh, will be forced to the next number. So they'll never be exactly the same unless the next value is exactly the same, which can happen. You know, you can you can roll 75 twice out of 100. But let's just see what their behavior is like now. I can already see the princess is moving independently of the merchant. Um, so this is saying, you know, not only are they forced to grab a new random, but there's also only a 33% chance that this uh, 1,000 millisecond timer is even going to launch this uh, routine over here. So it's really, just by adding this, we've really shaken, shaken things up a bit and randomized it a lot. So not only does the timer have to expire, but uh, it has to, this random number, if it is, you know, less than 66, it's uh, not even going to fire. So uh, it forces these two to move independently of each other for one and randomizes things a great deal for another. Now we could uh, take this timer here, set that down to say 100 milliseconds, and I guarantee you this is going to hit a lot more often, but they're still going to be very randomized. So they should still be quite independent of each other. So on that note, we have successfully created our NPCs. Now, the next thing we're going to want to learn, and I'll probably do this in a follow-up tutorial, uh, naturally, uh, what fun are NPCs if you can't talk to them? Notice how she walked through me. I don't have my character's uh, position on the map being blocked like I have theirs. See, they just collided with each other there and they didn't walk through each other. Uh, she can walk through me, but I can't walk through her. Um, so, you know... There are some still some little bugs there, you know, to work out. But uh, you know, one of them is just setting my character's position to be blocked in the same way that I'm doing theirs, where my last tile is unblocked, my new tile, my destination tile is blocked. <clears throat> and then when they hit me, excuse me, when they run into me, there'll be a collision. So it's uh, fun stuff. NPCs, uh, here we come. <laughs> now I'm sorry that we couldn't implement these fully. Uh, it would have been really nice to be able to do that. Uh, but until I actually am able to populate these NPC values, these, um, I'm sorry, populate this NPC list from uh, my map loader, the map handler that we created a couple uh, episodes back, um, which I could actually kind of talk you through here. I can't give you a demonstration because I don't actually have a map that has any NPC data in it, but the NPC <clears throat> values that are most important for us to capture are the texture, the model, which we're probably not going to want to pass through in the form of an enumerated uh, type like this. Uh, instead, what I'm thinking is maybe just pass a string value through saying, oh, this is Princessor, this is merchant, and then instead of uh, doing a select case on the model like this, uh, make that model a string. So that would resolve that. 
Uh, string value is very easy to pass through our map data. Um, the only other thing that's really crucial for our NPCs at this point is their X and Y values. Those are just integers, also very easy, as you've seen, to pass through this map handler. So what we would do, what we end up doing, is just creating another loop at the end of this one. Uh, we'd have to add a header, another header item, saying how many NPC items are contained in the map. Uh, so when it reaches the end of this, it knows how, how far to proceed um, to load the MPC values into that. And we can, we can tack on all sorts of data to this map. Um, but we just populate it with, oh, you know, the entity model, say the princess is a string, and the XY value, and loop through from zero to the count of NPCs and um, <clears throat> and then it would and you know just the same way we do this we populate uh, our map base sorry our map base <laughs> there it is uh, populate this list directly from there and uh, then whenever we go to load our map, it'll load whatever NPCs are included in that map. So it's going to be fun stuff when we get to that point, but uh, I have a little ways to go on my map editor. I, I did make some progress on it today. Um, I'm happy to announce that, but I still have a lot of work. I'm just trying to get it to where I can add some NPC models and stuff. But Anyway, I appreciate you all... Uh, coming along for the ride. It's been a lot of fun. I hope that this has been helpful to you, even uh, if it's not a full implementation. I know you, you know there's a lot of smart people out there, um, that, and I hope you guys are doing a little experimentation of your own, you know, from all these tutorials that you've been watching. Uh, you know, don't be afraid to, to hack your projects apart and try adding new things on your own. Try, uh, you know, come, if you have an idea, just try to do it and see where it takes you. Uh, that's exactly how I've been learning this stuff. Um, you know, I just be like, hmm, how do I create an NPC? I have no idea. So I just started hacking, hacking away at it and, you know, at long last I finally came up with a solution. But try stuff like that. Get out there, you know, with your maps and your little games and see what you can do. And if you get hung up, you know, just make a backup of your project if you're worried about losing it. But, you know, of course, you always have my source code that you can play with as well. And again, I will include um, this on the tutorial eventually. It takes me a little while to get everything all put together and uploaded to my website, but you should be able to download that. Anywho, I wish you all luck on your projects. Thanks for uh, watching. Uh, if you think that this will help anyone else that you know, feel free to pass it along to them. I always appreciate more views. That's what YouTube's all about, right? Ah. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, I, I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Mm,